بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we'll start our uh, <coughs> talk about رحيق uh, المخطوم the seer of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم I'm not sure which number it is, but today, inshallah, we'll continue on from where we left off. We talked about some of the battles or the missions that Rasulullah started off um, uh, prior to, uh, after the, the, the hijrah was completed and uh, prior to the, the battle of Badr or Ghazbat al-Badr, Ma'arakat al-Badr, whatever you want to remember with. Uh, and that was our first big battle, this is why there, there was a smaller battle around Badr was done in the, in, in the past prior to the, 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 this battle of Badr. That's why this one is called Ghazbat al-Badr al-Kubra as well. Um, <coughs> as far as uh, uh, today's talk go, we'll talk about uh, just a few points from uh, briefly, the brief summary of the last week's talk and then uh, we'll move on to battle of Badr. And we also have to talk about Sariya Nakhla, uh, which is one of the the battle that occurred prior to Badr and uh, we were not able to cover last week. Um, today we will not be able to cover all, all the, uh, the things about Battle of Badr, but uh, some of the important points inshallah will cover. It may take uh, uh, at least one more talk to talk directly about what happened in the Battle of Badr as well, uh, and then we'll talk about the effects of Badr in the later talks inshallah. As far as um, those battles that occurred prior to the Battle of Badr, and there was, there was eight of them. Uh, within the the time span of within like an 11 months time period, these uh, uh, these eight battles uh, occurred. Uh, four of them were, uh, said, uh, were referred as the one that were led by a Sahabi Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hence, it's called Sariya. While the other one, the other four, led by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself. Uh, hence, it's called Ghazwa. Um, now. Uh, we talked about that, that we should know about the background of why these uh, missions happened. And we see that uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu after he established the state in Medina, he was working to make sure, one, to uh, protect the Muslims over there. Hence, there will be no more, uh, there's no more uh, invasions or some sort of uh, harm to be done against the Muslims. And uh, for that, he was also working to prevent all the routes that were leading to, from Mecca to Medina. So the, the, the Meccans may not think of it as an easy target, or the Muslims as easy targets. Uh, and of course, also, uh, that resulted into some of the battles, and the battles, uh, the purpose of that included that not only to expand the control of Rasulullah in the surrounding areas, but to have a safe haven for the Muslims, and uh, so they can carry the message of Islam to the people. Uh, and uh, we carry the message of Islam to the people as an obligation. Uh, but uh, of course, there is no more, you cannot uh, force somebody to become a Muslim. Uh, the idea is to make sure that we convey the message to be uh, rest is up to every human being, whether he accepts, he or she accepts or rejects uh, the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, they have, uh, there are consequences uh, in the day of judgment for the people who rejects uh, the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the idea of conveying uh, the message as Rasulullah was sent as a, uh, as a Bashir, meaning as a, the one who uh, gave the glad tidings of the Jannah, and also a Nadir, the one who warned the people of the consequences. So because of that, all these things happened, and of course uh, the result was Muslims were able to uh, gather some of the uh, economic benefits out of that as well. Uh, but the sole purpose of that was not the economic uh, benefit, rather it was to raise the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let the people know what the message of Islam is about. Okay, so uh, these are the eight happens and we talked about the first seven last week and we'll talk about uh, the Sariya Nakhla today, inshallah. That, well, that occurred in the second year after the Hijrah, uh, in the month of Rajab. And uh, to understand, when we say the month of Rajab, Rajab is one of the uh, months which are referred as uh, uh, a Shah al Haram, meaning a sacred month in which uh, fighting is not allowed. Um, and uh, hence it became an issue 
because the Muslims were the one who initiated this uh, this battle, and uh, uh, Muslims were the one who ended up uh, killing one of the mushrikeen, polytheists, uh, in this battle. Uh, and uh, the kuffar they made a big noise about this that the Muslims are not following the uh, following something something divine that not to fight in the month uh, in the sacred month. And those four four sacred months are uh, the 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 and the uh, Muharram, and then the the one of them which is not is consecutive is the month of Rajab. The Rajab which is uh, a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi talks about uh, this Rajab because there were multiple Rajabs were referred as among the Kuffar but it's, uh, what is uh, referred by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala as a month of Rajab is a month which is called the Rajab of the mother. Mother, mother was a tribe uh, that was following the correct uh, version of the, the, the month which falls between um, uh, it falls before the Sha'ban, month of Sha'ban. So the, before the before the Shaba, uh, and uh, the, the the other ones were uh, they changed the order of the month of Rajab, and they were referring to is the month which was not the one before the Shaban. So, but what Islam recognizes is the one that was before the uh, Shaban. Now, uh, so what happened was Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent some of the Sahaba. It was led by Abdullah bin Jahsh, uh, one of the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he was also. Uh, a cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and a brother of uh, uh, Zainab bint Jahash radiyallahu anha who became uh, one of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam later on um, and then uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent 12 uh, uh, muhajirin with uh, uh, Abdullah bin Jahash and he gave him a letter and he told him that after 2 days of travel open this letter and they were heading towards Nakhla Nakhla was very close to uh, close to Mecca, between Mecca and Medina, and, uh, and it was close to the uh, close to the Haram. Uh, uh, so, they, of course, in the Haram, it's not whether you are to, when you say Haram, Haram is the, the surrounding area of uh, Masjid al Haram or the Kaaba. Uh, when it comes to the Haram, in general, the fighting is not allowed, whether it's, the, it's, a, it's a sacred month or not. Now, so the letter that was given to uh, Abdullah bin Jahash. Rasulullah uh, Sallallahu told him in that letter when he, he opened it after two days that take the ones with you who are willing to go with you and uh, it was a volunteer act. If they don't want to move forward with you towards the Nakhla, send them back. Okay? And that was connected to this idea of if you move forward, there is a chance you will be martyred. So uh, hence, uh, but none, none of the, them returned back and uh, uh, all 12 of them who were with uh, Abdullah bin Jahaj, they wanted to move forward uh, towards the Nakhla. And uh, the purpose was uh, to, uh, again, the, the, the first to understand, this is happening right before the month of Rajab. Uh, and uh, it, there was a sacred month and there was issue for the Muslims. If they are in the month of Rajab, they will not be able to fight. And uh, <clears throat> as we see that, when they get there for the caravan that was loaded with uh, the goods of the Meccans, and this is what they were after uh, at, at that time. And that, uh, that caravan included Amr bin uh, al-Hadrami, Uthman, and Nawfal. They were the sons of Abdullah bin uh, al-Mughira, and al-Hakam bin Kaysan and others were in the, in the caravan of the Meccans. Uh, the names I'm mentioning here because these are, again, these are the men names uh, important. Amr ibn Hadrami, especially he's the one who, who got killed. And uh, Uthman and, uh, 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 and Al-Hakam were the one who became the prisoners of war in this battle. So now, uh, uh, among the Muslims, there were also two Sahaba, uh, Sa'ab bin Abi Waqas and Uthba bin Ghazwan. They lost the camel and they started looking for the camel and then... Uh, they got kind of a detached from the rest of the Muslims, and they went back uh, to the Muslim. Uh, they went back to, 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 to Medina. So they were not a part of that battle that happened at that time. So, uh, but the Muslims were discussing whether they should move forward and fight with them, with, or uh, or should we? Uh, or, or should, or what should we do? Should, because they they escaped and they ran into Haram, the area. Uh, they were go, they were they ran, running towards the Haram. So, it, so they, if they would have. Uh, waited for the month to uh, to end, and then then they can follow uh, the caravan. 
that would have been, they would have might have entered into the haram and that would be a problem as well. They would not be able to fight. Hence, they decided they're going to fight prior to the Meccans enter into the haram. And when uh, this fight happened, uh, the arrows were thrown against each other. Ahmad bin Hadrami was the one who got killed. Now, this killing happened in the month of Rajab. And uh, that's the, that became a thorn for the kuffar and they started promoting the, the things against Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions that they are not uh, respecting the sacred months that not only the, 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 the Muslims or those, uh, the people of, the, of the Mecca they really followed but they knew that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and the Muslims in general they also followed that month as a sacred month as well so Allah Azza wa Jal uh, uh, replied to their, uh, their, their, their saying that they were disrespecting Rasulullah and Sahaba about this and the Muslims were also had a little bit of uh, you know dissatisfaction what happened uh, so they, do, they did get two prisoners of war some of the spoils of war here but when they went back uh, they asked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding the uh, uh, Shahr al-Haram and Rasul, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la replied to them يَسْتَلَمُونَ كَعَنَ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ قِتَالٍ فِي that they ask you about uh, fighting in the uh, sacred month so Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ it is a big sin it is a transgression to fight in those months that Allah has made it the sacred and we should not be fought. But then Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned, عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِهِ وَالْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَهْلِهِ مِنْهُ أَكْبَرْ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ So it's uh, Akbar in the Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, okay, that's, that is a big sin, but uh, rejecting uh, or, or, or creating barriers in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. صَدُّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِهِ And to do the kufr and uh, 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 and also uh, to, to, uh, to force the people out of the Masjid al-Haram and the area and to, to leave their lands uh, from their own family members. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is much bigger than in front of Allah azza wa jal than fighting or the, to, uh, or, or the killing that happened in this, uh, in this month. So that, that uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fitna to akbar min qatl, min qatl that uh, fitna or uh, um, uh, tra- tra- transgression, I don't know how to translate the word fitna. Fitna in general, uh, I'll refer to it uh, here, it could be a facade that's created by the people, but fitna in general can mean trials and tribulations as well. So now, they are, when the humans are creating these trials and tribulations against each other, this is bigger than, uh, 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 than, 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 than killing and fighting. Uh, uh, while when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a person into a fitna or trial and tribulation, that's a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when people follow. Uh, or continue to do what Allah has commanded even when they are under some trial or some hardship then they get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay so uh, then when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, was given this, uh, these ayat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam released those two prisoners of war uh, and uh, Amal Hadrami who was killed in, during this battle uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam paid off the blood money for uh, Amal uh, bin uh, Hadrami Okay, and then, uh, so that was the, the last Sariya uh, that we talked, uh, that happened before the Ghazwat al-Badr al-Kubra, or the big battle of Badr that happened, which Allah Azza wa referred to as the day of the Badr as Yawm al-Furqan. This is the day that the Haq and Batil and the truth and the falsehood, they were clearly distinguished. They were separated uh, at that time. Now, what is the one that led to Ghazwat al-Badr? Uh, as the book is talking about the reason of the battle of the Badr. Um, so we talked about uh, the Zaghazwa al ushaira uh, uh, which was the uh, Al-Ushayra. This is the battle in which uh, the Meccans actually, they were going towards Sham. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the Sahaba, they went after them because there were some other incidents happened. Uh, uh, they, uh, the the Mushrikeen of the Mecca, they actually looted some of the, uh, the cattle. Uh, of the Muslims prior to that. So when Rasulullah and Sahaba went to, uh, went to this battle, this mission, those, uh, uh, that caravan, as we see this term all the time, that the camels left. Camels left means the caravan left actually the place. So the caravan was gone. Uh, but uh, that same caravan that was coming back, returning back to Mecca now. Now Rasulullah found the news about them. And remember we talked about last week that Rasulullah was a very well aware person what was happening around the, around the Medina. 
So he was continuously getting information about the movements of the Meccans around Medina. Hence, when he found out about this caravan that was uh, led by Abu Sufyan, and uh, it had about 50,000 gold dinars, okay, uh, amount of uh, the goods that they were carrying. And that was uh, one-fifth of the, uh, the trade that the Meccans used to do per year. So the per year they used to do about 250,000 dinar worth of uh, trade. This was one-fifth of it that was carried by Abu Sufyan at that time uh, with uh, 40 other people, guards that he had. Now when Rasulullah found out about this, so Rasulullah started mobilizing the people to uh, ambush this caravan. Now um, Rasulullah gathered about the army of 300-317. Now this number, when we hear that, Sometimes you will hear 300, 313, 317. It's not an exact number, of course, because it's not like everybody is just counting in detail and rem uh, remembering the number that they have counted. So uh, the number was somewhere in between 300 to 317 men. Among them, there were 82 to 86 from the Muhajirin, and then the rest were, of course, uh, from the Ansar. The ones uh, from the Ansar were, can further be divided into al aws and al khazraj those two tribes they belong to, 61 from al aws and 170 from Khazraj. There's a reason, again, I, I, I am putting these numbers like that. The reason is, among the Muslims, Muslims used to recognize each other by these labels as well. Sometimes you think of it, oh, if you are calling people by certain labels, it means you are bringing disunity among the Ummah. That's not necessarily true. Because labels like this, whether it's al aws or Al-Khazraj, or Qurayshi, or Al-Ghaffari, meaning the one from Quraysh, one from uh, tribe of Ghaffar, one from tribe of al aws or Khazraj, or the Muslims were even divided into uh, Al-Ansar and Muhajirin as well. So these were, these were the labels just to recognize people. That does not bring disunity, or this is not the one that is condemned in Islam. Islam does condemn. Uh, the idea of nationalism in the manner that you start thinking you are better than the others. Okay? Hence, you, uh, 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 you should be treated differently than the others. In, in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakar wa untha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We, O oh people, we have created you from one male and one female. Wa ja'alnakum, uh, wa ja'alnakum shu'ubun wa qabayla. Uh, and we have created you into uh, nations and tribes so you can recognize each other. The purpose of this division is recognition. So you recognize, not, uh, 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 not for thinking one person is better than the other in this case. Then Allah Akhafum. And indeed, in front of Allah Azza wa the one who has more honor, or the honorable one is the one who has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That makes one person better than the other. But that's only in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still. It's not uh, 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 the idea of we started dealing with the people this way. No, we deal with the people as we are all sons, uh, sons and daughters of uh, Adam and Hawa. Yeah? Uh, so now here, that's why I want to make sure that we understand that. And they have a significance also in this battlefield as well. Because Rasulullah even divided the, the, the army this way. That the, 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 the flags were given for the Ansar and Muhajirin differently. Uh, and that's uh, another aspect of it. Now, what else was in this army? Uh, the Muslims had, uh, actually they only had two horses. SubhanAllah, it was not well equipped army, uh, only two horses, 300 plus uh, uh, fighters, and 70 camels. Even for them to go from Medina to Badr, they did not even have enough uh, uh, mounts or the rides to go on. So Rasulullah said, sah sah Sahaba were sharing the rides. So those camels were carrying people, two or three per person on each camel as well. As well, <coughs> and Rasulullah himself was uh, on a camel that was shared by Ali and uh, uh, Murthad. Uh, uh, there was another Sahabi, his name was Murthad bin Abi Murthad. Uh, and they were taking turns, even Rasulullah was taking turns among the uh, Sahaba as well. Uh, and as usual, when Rasulullah left Medina, as we've been talking about in the, in the previous talks as well, he always left behind as the caretaker of the Medina, who was in his absence, is the one not only leading the Salah, and sometimes the leading the Salah is referred as an action of leading the people, ruling the people. Any kind of issue comes up, he's the one who's making the decisions among them. And the Rasulullah first left Ibn Umm Maktoum as the, uh, as the one who's taking care of the affairs of the Medina, and then it was changed to Abu Lubaba bin Abdul Mundir. 
so these are the Sahaba who were left as to take care of the affairs of the Muslim. Now, when it comes to the leadership of the Muslim army, uh, uh, the, the general leadership was uh, given to Musa ibn Umar al-Qurashi uh, al al-Abdari. He is one of the famous Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who played a very pivotal role in uh, getting uh, help or the support from the people of Medina when he was sent by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go from Mecca to Medina when Rasulullah himself was still in Mecca. So he's the one who was able to create uh, an environment for the Muslims to migrate there and the, the place was ready for Rasulullah sallallahu to come and take over as a ruler. Yeah. All right, so that, that was Musa ibn Umar, and Rasulullah SAW gave him the, 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 the white flag that was for the uh, general leadership. And that's kind of a interesting how Rasulullah SAW used to choose different kinds of leader for different positions. See, Musa ibn Umar was kind of, a, even still, Medina, uh, Medina was still a newly formed state by Rasulullah SAW. And Musa ibn Umar was one of the key people who were dealing with both. He's from Ansar, he's from one of the uh, the people from the family of Quraysh, the leaders of the, the Meccans, and he was, Rasulullah himself was Banu Abdul Manaf, while uh, Musa'ab was from Banu Abdul Dar. These were the two brothers from, uh, from whom the, the, the rest of the tribes came out of the Quraysh as well, the, the sons of Qusay. Uh, um, uh, I apologize if I'm taking, uh, using too many names, uh, but these were names were used in the previous session. Uh, I, I, I highly recommend, start listening to, uh, the reason I'm repeating again and again, Hopefully they will stick, and when we read again in the book, uh, it will help. Yeah. Uh, so now, uh, Musa ibn Umar, you can see that as a leader like that, the one who has already dealt with both sides, uh, had leadership qualities, uh, was the best person for this position, and the Sulaiman made him the main general leader. But uh, besides that, uh, he also gave a banner to Ali ibn Abi Talib, and he was the leader among the Muhajirin. See that he, Rasulullah is distinguishing between the Ansar and the Muhajirin. So it's not like as if they did not have these kind of a groupings. It doesn't make them, oh, okay, because you call them Muhajirin or Ansar, oh, you're bringing a disunity among the Muslims. It was never looked at this way. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, we don't, uh, we have to understand what does it mean by recognizing each other by, because of our affiliations for different regions or if we, if, even if we speak different languages or different tribes, that's fine. But as long as we are not thinking of, oh, that makes one nation or one tribe better than the other. Okay? So it's the same way we see that Rasulullah also appointed Sa'ad bin Mu'ad radiallahu an, another great Sahabi of Rasulullah uh, as the leader or the one who's carrying the banner of the Al Ansar, the supporters of Rasulullah. Besides that, he divided the army into left flank and the right flank. Uh, uh, the Yameen was given to Maimana was given to Azubair ibn Awam, uh, who was a cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well. Uh, also, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib was also the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Saad bin Muad was one of the leaders of the Ansar. And the f uh, fourth one was Al Miqdad bin Amr. He was leading the left flank. See, remember these two guys, Zubair and Al Miqdad, were the only ones who, have, who had horses, so they were given these two uh, positions as well to lead them in the front. And the rear part, which is considered as the one who are uh, on the, the foot soldiers, was led by Qais ibn Abi, uh, ibn Abi Sa'sa. Uh, of course, the main leader of the army, which is, if you want to call them, the general commander-in-chief, was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. And he, that, that is, hence we call this battle as a ghazwa. Now, so this is what happened. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi came up with the army. Now... Uh, when uh, they were moving towards the Badr, Muslims, uh, there was a response from Abu Sufyan came. Abu Sufyan, who was also sending his people to find out the movement of Rasulullah They already were aware of, when they were going towards Sham, what happened? They escaped the, the, the Muslims, uh, which was the battle of Dhu uh, Ushayra. But now when we talk about coming back, so he was worried about the, uh, the security of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the caravan as well. So Abu Sufyan found out that uh, Muslims are preparing to go after this caravan. So now what he did, if, uh, uh, if you look at the Jaziratul Arab's uh, uh, map, you'll see that map is like this, and on the left side is called what? Uh, left is called west, right? Yeah, in the map. South? Yeah, no. yeah okay. So the west side is the, is the Red Sea. So what the caravan did was they moved towards the Red Sea 
further away from Medina, and they were able to escape Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Sahaba. Now Abu Sufyan uh, he did that, but at the same time he also sent uh, one of the person named uh, his name was Dhamdam uh, uh, bin Ahmad al Ghaffari, and uh, he went to Kaaba. And it's a very uh, interesting, dramatical way that they, they used to do the things, to announce that they are in trouble. So he, he went to Kaaba before the caravan, because the caravan has a lot of people, a lot of goods, and uh, uh, they cannot move as fast. So when you put one person on the horse and send them in one direction, that can go uh, cover the distance much faster. So he sent his uh, 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 person to go and uh, let the Quraysh know that we are in trouble, the Meccans can, or the, the Rasulullah and the Sahaba, they can take over the caravan. So now, what he did, he, he went to the uh, Kaaba and he fell down as, uh, as in a hurry. He, 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 what is it called in basketball? Uh, when somebody is acting but he's not really... Huh? Oh, so he started flopping here. Yeah. <laughs> so he flopped, and uh, he he fell off the the, the horse, and uh, uh, in front of the Kaaba, he cut off the nose, and uh, and the ears of the camp. Okay, and uh, turned it uh, turned the saddle upside down, and tore off his shirt from the front and from the back, and started crying out loud that uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and his companions are going to intercept the caravan. Or he, has, he says he's being intercepted by the Rasulullah And he said, I cannot say what would have happened to them. Help, help. Just uh, calling for help. Now, when Meccans found out, uh, of course, they started gathering uh, an army as well against the Muslims. Uh, they already were, uh, something has happened before when Amr bin, uh, Amr bin Hadrami, when he was killed and uh, <coughs> they had... Uh, uh, so the, uh, the, they wanted to protect, they have a safe haven for their caravans whenever they travel as well. So they start gathering, and now uh, they were reminding uh, 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 what happened to Ahmad al Hadrami, and uh, uh, so the Muslim, the, 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 these Mushrikeen, they start gathering people from all the tribes, and uh, they were able to gather an army of about 1,300 people. Um, Abu Lahab himself, was the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi used to make all sorts of trouble for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was in uh, Mecca. He he did not go himself, but he delegated somebody for uh, uh, on his behalf, and he gave him the money to the person. Now, besides that, Banu Adi, Banu Adi was the tribe of Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu anhu. So they also refused to to go along. But anyways, they were able to gather thirteen hundred soldiers that included hundred horsemen, six hundred. Uh, male soldiers, meaning uh, the one with the armors and all that, meaning they were they were well equipped compared to the army of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they had uh, sufficient uh, food supplies, and, and they were uh, to a to a point they were slaughtering nine or ten alternative days camels. Nine or ten means it's a that shows how many people they were feeding on a daily basis. As we will talk about later on, that how uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how many people would be. Uh, or, or the, the report that he received from a person, uh, how many people were coming to Medina after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sahaba. Um, as I mentioned, Abu Sufyan escaped. They were able to, they were, they were, the, the caravan was safe, but uh, now when uh, the Abu, Abu Sufyan, he sent the message that he's safe, and uh, now uh, people, they, they didn't want to go back also. Remember one thing, there was a tribal mentality they had. They knew these are all our family members. The one who are going against Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Sahaba, they also understood this is their, their own family, but at the same time they also have hatred uh, that was triggering them to go. But uh, or, or they want to protect their caravan. But when they found out the caravan is safe, they want to go back. Now Abu Jahl, I mean, this is the uh, well. I'm giving a talk. Cannot say things. Some other things. So Abu Jahl was a uh, uh, he was a staunch enemy of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah. He did not uh, want to go back, and he didn't want to take, uh, use this event now to go and wipe out basically Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba in Medina and take care of this, uh, the, this issue so they can have a, a safe route for their economic dealings. See, one of the key, key problems for them is this economic pain was a big thing for them. They cannot survive if their route to, Medina, to, to, to Sham or to Syria at that time was, uh, was blocked. Okay, 12.38, all right. Five more minutes, inshallah. Now, among them, al bin Shuraiq. Uh, he was also uh, one of the, the, the 
the, the, the enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu in the Meccan era of Rasulullah, he was one of the people who went uh, try all his best to stop the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu But he, from Banu Zahra, he advised his people, we're going to go back. Now, so he took his 300 soldiers along with him and he defected. Okay, so he left the army and now still Meccans had the army of thousand soldiers and they're still moving towards Badr. Okay, <clears throat> now when Rasulullah so found out about this, all this, what's happening, uh, now Sahaba did not know that they, the, the caravan had escaped. Okay, so Rasulullah started consulting the Sahaba, what should we be doing? And Allah Azza wa Jal actually reminds in, in Surah Al-Anfal, when Rasulullah and Sahaba were heading towards Badr, majority of the Muslims, they did not want to fight. They had the karahiyah, they had the dislike of fighting. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal even says that when he says, Kutib alaykum al qital, that Allah has prescribed for you fighting, that you did, that you will dislike it. Okay? People will dislike it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say, wa huwa khairun lakum. But there are perhaps things that you dislike, but they're good for you. Okay? And then he says, wa san takra shayyam wa huwa khairun lakum. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa san tuhibbu shayyam wa huwa sharrun lakum. And there are things that you may like, but they are bad for you. Wallahu ya'ala wa antum la zahamun. And you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you don't know. Okay? Allah is the one who is aware of what is good for you, what is bad for you. So this is where uh, the Muslims were, actually they were reluctant. They really were hoping, there's 40 people guarding uh, the caravan, that's easy, is an uh, is a easy target. On the other hand, there's a whole army coming. Who should we go after? So the Muslims were leaning towards going after the caravan. But Allah decided something else. Okay? And Allah is the one who decided the Muslims to go after the ta'ifa that was coming, which is the, the army, not the one that was carrying the caravan at that point. Okay, now Rasulullah started doing the uh, uh, consultation among the Sahaba, what should we be doing? Now when Rasulullah asked for this, uh, Abu Bakr, he first spoke and he gave full assurance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar got up, he started saying the very same thing. Then Al-Miqdar, Ibn uh, Aswad sometimes mentioned as uh, Al-Miqdar ibn Aswad, other places Al-Miqdar ibn Amr, it's the same person. Uh, but anyway, he got up. And he said the words in a very prolific way that uh, I'll talk about what Ibn Mas'ud said about his words. And his response, O Messenger of Allah, proceed where Allah directs you to. We are with you. We will not say that uh, what the children of Israel said to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. They say, فَإِذَا بَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَ إِنَّا هَا هُنَا قَائِدُونَ That uh, you and your Rabb go fight. We are sitting here. <laughs> this is what the response for, from them. Ibn Mas'ud says about this uh, hadith mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, and he, he mentions that what Al-Miqdas said at that time, uh, he said, it would have been dearer to me than anything that I had been the hero of that scene, uh, because he was the hero of the scene. And uh, he said, Al-Miqdas came to Rasulullah while Rasulullah was urging the Muslims. He's still asking Sahaba, what should we do? And that these words, what he said, that Ya Rasulullah, that we will fight with you from front. Uh, he said, we, we shall fight you from the right, on your left, and from the front, and from the behind. And Rasulullah, he said, uh, Ibn Masud said, I saw Rasulullah's face that is getting bright with, uh, with happiness for that what uh, al miqdad said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, that was is still not sufficient for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Rasulullah is still asking for help here. Uh, he's uh, asking, uh, well, what do you think about this? These three people who got up and said, they were all from the uh, Muhajirin, from the immigrants. The Ansar had not replied yet. Remember that in the Bayah, the Pledge of Allegiance of Rasulullah was given by the people of Medina. That was protecting him in Medina, not outside of Medina. So that was not part of the pledge that they, uh, that they, they took. So hence, they were still... Uh, Rasulullah was still asking from them, even though they were with Rasulullah he wanted to have the assurance from them. So now Sa'ad bin Mu'ad radiallahu an, uh, subhanallah, uh, another great sahabi Rasulullah sallallahu will talk about it in again more detail that he was in his 30s when he was uh, uh, martyred. And when he was martyred, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said that the throne of Allah azza wa jal was shaken. The throne of Allah was shaken because of him martyred by, uh, uh, by, by the Kuffar. Now here, this Sahabi, he got up and he said, 
uh, by Allah, I feel you want us, meaning Ansar, uh, to advise you or get to speak. So Rasulullah Sallallahu said, yes, I am talking, uh, he said, yes, this is what I'm referring to. So he said, oh, oh Rasulullah, Prophet of Allah, we believe in you and we bear witness to what you have bestowed us and we declare in unequivocal terms that what you have brought is the truth. We, we give you our firm pledge of allegiance and sacrifice. We will obey you most willingly in whatever you co command us and by Allah who has sent you with the truth. If you were to ask us to plunge into the sea, we will do that most readily and not a man of us will stay behind. We do not grudge the idea of encounter with the enemy. We are experienced in war and we are trustworthy in combat. We hope that Allah will show you through our hands those deeds of valor which will please your eyes. Kindly, kindly lead us to the battlefield in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. A, a great way of presenting the case in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very pleased with the responses of the Sahaba and then he said uh, 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 forward and be of cheer for Allah has promised me one of the two talking about either against the caravan or against the, the army of the, the, of the Meccans and, uh, and by Allah it is as if now saw the enemy lying prostrate meaning defeated so uh, we'll stop here, inshallah, and uh, if there is any questions or comments about the subject uh, covered today or even previously, uh, inshallah, I'll try to answer or, uh, or if there's any comment, that's fine. And any, any other questions are also welcome if I can answer, I'll answer inshallah.